Hey friend, welcome back to Seed and Sparrow Homestead. We are hanging out in the kitchen today. It is a rainy, gloomy day. Perfect for getting things done inside. Um, the garden's getting a much needed drink, which I'm very thankful for. So we are spending time in the kitchen. We're gonna be preserving a bunch of the stuff that I've been harvesting from the garden that's been taking up room in my fridge and on the countertops and something needs to be done. So today's the day we're preserving all of the harvests thus far from the garden. I need to get my hair up and out of the way. I need to clear off my workspace. I gotta get the freeze dryer warming up and we're gonna get this day started. So first matter of business today, I will be freeze drying some things. I also have plans to can a few recipes and maybe freeze some things as well. But I will be showing you some of my freeze drying process. Before I had one, I really liked to watch that whole process, see how things turned out and how the product was used. So I hope you um, enjoy that as well. But I know that's a luxury. Not everyone is able to have a freeze dryer. I'm very thankful for it. And one year, my husband and I just decided we were going to devote our tax return to a purchase of a freeze dryer because it made sense for us here with how much preserving I do. It's very hands-off. It does the work for me, which is awesome. So I love using it, but I know not everyone has one. And I know some people aren't really into canning either. Um, either they don't want to, or they're just not at a place where they can afford to invest in some of the equipment. Um, I don't have the time, but perhaps you have the time to freeze some things. Um, this book, Freeze Fresh by Crystal Schmidt. She is the creator of Whole Fit Homestead. I have followed her for many years over on Instagram. I love all of her content. She's a wealth of knowledge. And in this book, there is everything you need to know about how to freeze veggies and fruit. She has lots of meal inspiration in here as well, how to use it. Um, so if you aren't able or don't want to can freeze dry, freezing is a great option and this is my go-to resource for when I am freezing things. So definitely go check it out. The other book I'll mention today is the Fall Complete Book of Home Preserving. This is my go-to resource for all of my canning recipes. Um, I also use the other ball preserving books as well. I'll link them all down in the description for you. But if you're looking for a good safe canning resource, definitely check out all of the ball books. So I think the first thing I'm gonna start working on is all of the kale. I have a whole bunch of it. Uh, the way that I use kale the most here is in soups during the fall and the winter. So I will either freeze dry or freeze them into like little pucks um, to pull out and just pop into my soup when I'm making it. Got my trays here, they're cleaned and ready to go. And I forgot before I do my kale, I want to make sure that I have room in this um, freeze dryer load for my herbs. I have marjoram here and I have lavender and I want to make sure that they get in there. I don't want them to dry out here rather than be freeze dried. It preserves all of their good like medicinal properties and their flavor and their aroma just that much more. So um, I'm going to take all the little lavender buds off of these stems, get them on here. Same with the marjoram. I'm just going to take all of the leaves off of the stems and then we're going to work on the kale. So I have always removed the leaves or the buds from the woody stems with herbs before I have freeze dried them. But I was just watching a video um, by Kaylee over at the Honeystead and she freeze dries a lot of herbs and she leaves the stems on them and it makes for easier removal of these leaves and buds. It took me forever to do this. So I am going to heed her advice and I'm gonna just leave them all together and then separate them after the freeze drying process is over.
I am super thankful for all of this beautiful kale. There was not one bit of bug damage, and honestly, I'm floored because every year there are so many holes or tears or something done by little critters. And this year, at least so far, the pest pressure has been pretty low. I'm not totally sure why. Um, it's been a strange year um, weather-wise, just lots of fluctuating temperatures and late frosts. So perhaps they were killed off. Perhaps they don't know what's going on either and they're confused, but super thankful to have this beautiful kale that we can eat all winter long. All I'm doing to prepare the kale for the freeze dryer is removing the stem and just tearing it into smaller pieces. They will crumple up a bit more once they are fully freeze dried. So I don't worry about getting them too small. All right, so all of my trays have been filled. I have basically three and a half trays of kale and then a little bit of herbs. So uh, first freeze dryer load is ready to go. I do have this, where is it? <laughs> Whole pan here of purple kale. So I think I'm gonna show you how I would freeze that. And I'll just refer to Crystal's book to give you an idea of how that all works. We're going to be steam blanching the kale, you can do that with any leafy green. Um, if you don't have like a steamer insert for one of your pots, this is what I do. So this is what I use. I don't have a steamer insert. I'm just using one of my soup pots. There's about an inch, maybe a little bit more of that water there that I'm bringing to a boil. And then I just put my strainer on top of that and I will put a lid over it. The lid doesn't seal perfectly. It's okay, it still works. It's not ideal. But if you're on a budget, this is one way to get around not having the steamer insert. Per Crystal's instructions in Freeze Fresh for all dark leafy greens, which include kale, spinach, Swiss chard, or even beet and dandelion greens, um, you want to steam blanch them for three minutes. And you use some tongs to toss the greens around around the 90 second mark. Work in batches, don't overcrowd the pot. Um, about two large handfuls is what I put in there. And she recommends not using an ice bath, which I have done previously. So that's all you do. Once that three minute is up, you just transfer them. Um, I put them right into my silicone pan over here. You wanna do that while they're still warm and you can really pack them in there. You can also use like a metal muffin pan. Um, you're probably just going to have to run that underneath some warm water to get them to pop out. So here are my little kale pucks. I ended up with four. They're cool now so I can put them in the freezer. I'm gonna stick them in there until they're frozen solid and then I'll pop them out of here and into a freezer Ziploc bag um, to use throughout the winter. So I'm gonna get those in the freezer and then we're gonna work on our rhubarb. How I'm going to be using the rhubarb today is in a barbecue sauce. This will be my second time making it. I made it last year and we love it. It's delicious. It's very different. It's like no barbecue sauce I have tasted before. It's quite sweet, a little bit spiced. It's very delicious with chicken or pork. We've also eaten it with um, a barbecued brisket and just use that as our barbecue sauce for sandwiches. So there's lots of different ways you can use it um, with different meats. The name of this barbecue sauce is Victorian barbecue sauce. It can be found on page 259 in the Ball Complete book of home preserving. It requires eight cups of chopped rhubarb, three and a half cups of lightly packed brown sugar, one and a half cups of chopped raisins, one half cup of chopped onion, a half cup of white vinegar, and then a teaspoon each of allspice, cinnamon, ginger, and salt. We're gonna get this onto our stove top, bring it up to a boil, stirring frequently, once it boils, we're gonna reduce the heat, allow it to boil gently, stirring always until the mixture is thickened to the consistency of a thin commercial-like barbecue sauce. It takes about 30 minutes. Now 
Moving on to filling our jars, these need to be filled to one half inch of headspace. Adding our four jars lids, making sure they are centered, tightening the rings to fingertip tight, getting these in the canner. We're gonna bring it up to a rolling boil and once it gets to that point, we can set our timer for 15 minutes. And this is in a water bath canner. I was left over with just a little bit extra rhubarb and I was paging through Crystal's book and she had a recipe for like a roasted caramelized rhubarb sauce. So I went ahead and I kind of altered that to what I had, I didn't have as much as her recipe calls for and I did it a little bit different but it's rhubarb brown sugar vanilla and a little bit of salt you kind of let the juices come out and then she roasts it in the oven I just did it on the stove top and oh my goodness it's so delicious and it'd be fantastic over ice cream or yogurt and I'm excited to eat this We are shifting our gears back towards preserving strawberries. I just picked, this is about seven and a half pounds here and I just picked probably another pound or two. So I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with these. I was talking with my husband Matt and he's like, I was telling him what I was thinking I was going to do. And he's like, you're not going to do any jam. And I'm like, do you know how much jam we have downstairs in the pantry? He's like, yeah, but we don't have any strawberry jam. <laughs> so. He's requesting jam. He's like, what if we don't have a good harvest next year? And he's like, I don't want to not have strawberry jam from our garden for an entire year. And I was like, okay, so I guess I'm going to make some jam. Um, I think I'm going to freeze some whole. One of you, I, I can't remember what your name is, but one of you said on my last strawberry video, have I ever made sherbet or sorbet? And I have not, but that sparked my interest. Now I want to do that. So I want to freeze some whole. So we're going to do that. And if I have enough, I want to slice them and um, let them sit in some sugar and, you know, pull out their juices. And then we're going to freeze some that way, I think, as well to use on toppings for different pastries. If I want to make like a shortcake or a pound cake, that sort of thing um once strawberries are no longer in season so that's what we're working on now so what i've done thus far i measured out what i'll need for my jams so that's sitting in this bowl these strawberries are what i have left to work with for whole and sliced frozen strawberries so i think what i'm gonna do i want to at least fill an entire cookie tray with them i'm gonna haul them and lay them on here um, in a single layer and we're going to flash freeze them um, so that way you know they don't all stick together in a bag so I'm gonna see what I'm left with after that if it's not very many which I don't think it will be I might just go ahead and freeze them all whole I know I'm gonna have more strawberries coming in probably for another week or two um, before they peter out so um, we should be able to get some sliced strawberries here yet I had to move my camera around the sun came out and it is just too bright in here now um, I'm moving on to my jam so I ran into a little bit of a dilemma because 
Um, I hadn't planned on making any jam, so I don't have any powdered pectin here. Um, I actually have Pomona's pectin on order, as well as the book for all of the jam recipes, jellies, and whatnot. But that's not going to be here for a little while, so um, I need to do something with them now. So I'm looking through my ball book here, and there's something called a natural summer jam, and instead of pectin, it uses apples, and I have apples here. So we need some apples. Um, I have a lemon here, water, our strawberries, and some sugar. And thankfully with this recipe, it does not require as much sugar as it would if I was using pectin. So that's nice. So we're gonna try this and hopefully it turns out. Never done it before. Um, so we shall see. And I don't think I mentioned it before, but if you hear like a ton of obnoxious peeping, it's because we have six um, new layer pens here in our dining room. That's what happens when you have a small homestead and a small home, animals take over. So sorry for the all the obnoxious chirps that you hear in the background. So apples here contain a lot of natural pectin, and this is what gets this jam to actually set. So I just roughly chopped up whole apples, core intact. I just removed the blossom end and the stems. In went an entire lemon, um, just diced up. And then this boils with just a little bit of water to keep it from sticking for about 20 to 30 minutes until everything is nice and soft. And then you just strain it through until you get two cups of applesauce. So our applesauce went into our pan. To that, I am adding eight cups of halved hulled strawberries. And then we need a five and a half cups of granulated sugar. I always use organic raw cane sugar. And that's it. We're going to bring it to a boil over medium heat. We're gonna stir it constantly, dissolving all that sugar. We boil, stirring always until it thickens. And you can see it's kind of forming a film on this and getting to its gel stage. And then we're going to remove it from the heat and we're going to skim off all that foam, get it into our jars up to one quarter inch of headspace. This goes in a water bath canner and we bring it to a boil and it processes for 10 minutes. We always need to wipe our rims of any food that could have gotten on them but take extra care with something that has a high sugar content like jam, it gets super sticky and that could really prevent all of our lids from sealing and we don't want wasted food. So make sure to clean them up really well. I like to use some white vinegar to do that. I wanted to show you how nicely this jam is set up and it's still even a little bit warm here. I was slightly concerned going into it that it wouldn't work, but it did and it is very yummy. Here is how our freeze dried kale and lavender and marjoram turned out. The kale I like to store in mylar bags for more long-term storage. I have so much of it coming in. I'll keep like one half gallon jar of kale on the shelf and then everything else will just go into mylar bags with oxygen absorbers for more long-term storage. And then I put all of my herbs into mason jars with oxygen absorbers. These I will continue to add to throughout the season, but I do have lots of plans for the lavender to use in salves and soaps and other things like that. I 
I let the whole strawberries freeze overnight, so now they're ready to go into a freezer bag. One cookie sheet filled a one gallon freezer bag very nicely. That's all I have for you this week, friends. Thanks so much for hanging out with me in the kitchen as we have entered preservation season. I'm excited for it. Let me know what you're most excited to preserve this season down in the comments. Don't forget to like this video, share it with all of your friends. I really appreciate it. Have a blessed week and I'll see you next time. Take care.